Let's look at contract-driven development in a nutshell. We believe in an API design-first approach where the provider and consumer of the APIs come together, they collaboratively design the API, they capture the agreement in an open API or an async API specification. Once we have agreed on the specification, then we put it in a central Git repo. That's our single source of truth. This is what everybody would refer to going forward. To get into a central contract repo, we would go through a standard pull request process that all developers, testers, engineers are familiar with. And this is how they generally collaborate. So we want to use the same approach of collaborating on contracts as well. So typically how with code, we would have a static analyzer, a linter that would do checks for consistency and standards. We would do that same for the specification as well. Once the linter passes, then we would check for backward compatibility. Now, backward compatibility is something very important in most organizations. They would figure out that the change that they have made broke one of the consumers only when they get to an integration environment or very late in the cycle. We wanted to shift that left and cast that as early as possible. So here, what we are trying to do is we have the updated version of the specification. We have the old version of the specification. So what do we do? We take the new version, we run it as test. So Specmatic can take a specification and start it as a stub. So we would do that with the new specification. And then the old specification would be run as a test against this thing. So it's actually a no-code solution, but it does an execution to verify if all those tests from the old specification pass against the stub of the new specification, that means the new specification is backward compatible. Once that is established, then there would be a review process and then the changes would get merged into the Git repo. Once the changes are in the Git repo, now the consumer team could get started on their thing. They don't need to wait for the provider to be available because they can refer to the central contract repo and use the specification as a stub, as a wire compatible stub, you know, powered by Specmatic. So they would be able to do their development and testing completely locally. They would be able to also do a lot of fault injection and other kinds of scenarios like empty state, error state, to make sure that their consumer code is resilient. At the same time, the provider could also get started. They could use this the specification in the central repo as a contract test. So this would basically make sure that they can do almost like a test-driven development type style of development where they could run the contract test against the service. Initially, the test would fail, then they would go write just enough code to make the test pass. And when all the contract tests are passing, they know that their implementation is adhering to the specification. At this point, each of them could independently go through the continuous integration process. And the first thing you would do is run all your unit tests. Then you would want to run your component tests, but the component tests would need the provider in this case, again, the Specmatic would provide you it in the CI, your service as a stub. Again, powered same from the central Git repo. Similarly, here on the provider, when they go through continuous integration, they would do the unit test and then they would run all the contract tests uh, against their implementation. And if they want, they could also run other kinds of API workflow tests. So once this is done individually, each of their builds would pass and then promote their artifacts into an integration environment. Once you get into an integration environment, at this point, you would not expect to see any surprises. This basically then unblocks your path to production. And this is in a nutshell, what we believe is essentially contract-driven development. There are some key advantages to this approach that you might want to keep in mind. First is this whole shift left. What this bar at the bottom is highlighting is the later you catch an issue, the more expensive it gets. So you, you know, you want to shift it left and in Specmatic, we are trying to shift this all the way at the design level where the provider and consumer can collaborate and figure out any mismatches as early as the design time itself. Not only is this shifting to design time, but also for the developers or the provider and consumer, they have this very nice feedback loop that is working closely in their local laptop, working with the contract as stub and contract as test powered by Specmatic again. So this, again, allows them to enhance the developer experience. It's a very seamless developer experience, and it also drastically improves the collaboration between the provider and consumer, again, using something that they're already very familiar with, which is the whole GitOps process. 
Now, this whole approach that I've just described has helped us drastically reduce the time to market because now the consumer is not waiting for the provider to be ready. They are almost starting on day zero in parallel and they're able to finish and independently develop and test things without having to wait on each other and without waiting for a late feedback. So this really reduces a lot of rework and simplifies the overall development and deployment process. And finally, when we're building these APIs, these are our building blocks and we want to make sure each of those APIs are very resilient. And so Specmatic has a whole battery of tests that we generate from the specification. We do a lot of boundary case testing. We do a lot of fault injection testing to make sure your API is resilient. It behaves the way it's supposed to behave. And this allows you to then deploy it and scale it. That's, I would say, like the four key benefits of using contract-driven development. Thank <laughs> you.